Wow. We're choosing up. We're choosing our reality. I mean, look at it, man. Look at it, man. Whose perspective is this? Who has this perspective when they say, this is the world I live in? You know what I'm saying? We got on the series, man. All you know, peace and power to everyone who made, who provided such great links, man, to make, um, you know, that series, the Moor, the Moabite, the the Baphomet, the Muhammad of Belus, you know what I'm saying? I think we did seven or eight parts of that. Uh, special thanks, man, to my brother Christopher Duncan, man. Chris Duncan, man, which we're going to drop some very pertinent information from my bro Chris Duncan in this drop. You know what I mean? So we just want to just get a couple perspectives, man, as we start inching towards this Preston John series, man. And um, it's dope to kind of get back. You know what I mean? To that investigation, you know what I mean? Because that's a real investigation. That's what we're doing, man. We're really looking for all the trails, man. And um, to know what happened recently and to tie that into your chronology, to tie this into your chronology, when you know that your takedown was recent, very recent, and that the hijack looked just like you. We're just talking Psalms 83. Psalms 83, for they have formed a confederacy against you, my children. They have formed a confederacy. They are confederate against you. They have linked together to take over the grid. Now you think about North America, South America, Africa, right? But this is what it really looked like, you know, in the mind of a hijack. Who's clinging to Atlantis. And if you understand and comprehend and overstand that Atlantis is named after Atlas. The first son of Poseidon. Then you know the hijack is real. When their perspective of Morocco is Atlantis. The son of Poseidon. And those are the dynasties that end up being the dynastic rulers of Atlantis or pharaohs. Or ascended masters. We're talking Thoth and them. Come on. But this is their, you know, this ain't no play. I mean, this is what they truly See it as. Now perspective is everything, right? Because when I ask you, what's your perspective of the world? I ask you, what's your perspective? <sighs> yeah, these maps exist. You just got to dig them up. You notice all the uh, writing. I know it's small, but it's right side up. But everything else looks like it's upside down. And I ask you, is your perspective of the world what Massa gave you in his projection? In which way is up? In which way is east? Are you in the orient? Are you in orient? Or are you in the orient? Are you in the east? Or are you in the west? Because on this map it looks like they're in the west and you're in the east. On this map, it looks like when you go south, you're going north. And when you go north, you're going south. In other words, you've been flipped upside down, Negro. And I wonder who flipped you. Probably someone with the perspective of the world that looking like this. Oh, wow. His body bag for the illusion. Game over, man. Because if this is your world, 
And if we factor in the land that's missing, which they're calling Atlantis, but look, oh, the great Atlantis. Well, let's look at some more perspective, shall we? Are you in the east or the west? Let's look at some more perspective, shall we? You see, you have to get your perspective. You're responsible for your perspective, my people. And you teach it to your children correctly. So, they're rocking with Atlantis. We also have Mu. We know Lemuria. We know Lemuria and Mu. They want to claim it all. I mean, they want to claim it all, but do they really want to claim it all? These are the Amexum Atlantis Islands. I mean, we're just talking about the, you know, basic Caribbean. We're talking about Haiti. We're talking about Puerto Puerto Rico. The Yucatan's connected over there, all right? So you're just talking about Central America. Man, we're getting our war drums on, man. Oh, I don't know what that is. I'm just surfing the wave and tribal war songs, man. Uh, don't you mind me. Well, it's all good. Because we're only talking about perspective. I mean, this is tribal war. This is a frequency war. And this is just a perspective you're not used to getting, man. So just meditate on it. Because it ain't play play. This is a much more accurate depiction of your world. But you must flip it. To know that the South Pole is the North Pole. And the North Pole is the South Pole. Yeah, yeah, they'll do that. They'll do that to spin you upside down and put you on a spinning ball and tell you east is west and west is east. Tell you you're from over here. When you're from over here, you're from the land that's connected over here. They're connecting it all, right? They're connecting it all. Father half, they say. So they want to claim, just like this map right here, they want to claim entire North America, my people, as Ham. South America is the land of Ham, but where is Shem? Where are the Israelites? Where's the Hebrew? Nah, man, this is our confederacy. I mean, how is Moab even cool with that being, you know what I'm saying, of the lineage of Shem? How is Esau okay with this? I mean, are these the wars they were having? Because Esau's like, look, man, you can't claim everything for Ham and Cush, man. Is this the situation that was going down? You know, you keep hearing about this war and that war and these treaties and those treaties. And, of course, we're all in the mix of things. Look how they're dividing the world, my people. Now, when you say more, you got to say, all right, you want more. You want to be Moroccan. And Moroccan to you isn't just over here. It happens to be everywhere, right? And you're not just saying, uh, I'm from the tribe of Morocco. You're saying, I'm a Moabite, a Canaanite, a Jebusite, a Amalekite, a... a I'm a knight, you know, you're you're a confederacy, you're you're a clique, you're a crew. You're a crew that's confederate. 
against the people of the land, against the people, the original sequence, the indigenous, the true indigenous. You're confederate against somebody when you only, you know, divide your land into Ham and Kush. And you mix out, <laughs> you know, oh, forget about, how do you forget about Moses? Where does Moses fit into this? Moshe, Mozaka, Mosak. We're only talking perspective. We're only talking perspective. You know, so sometimes it seems like you have an ancient issue between people that migrated here from here and here from here. You got the East Coast seem to be taken up, you know, by a lot of this Atlantean. And then you got a lot of the mood happening over here. So you have a natural East Coast versus West Coast. And they played that shit in hip hop for, you know what I'm saying, to the... <laughs> All the way to the turf, man. I mean, many people lost their lives in this East Coast, West Coast stuff, man. And there's an energy, there's a frequency they're playing off of you while you're in your amnesia state. Perspective. Perspective. Father Ham, huh? Negro River, the Amazon River. Negro River. The Atlantis Islands, that's what we were just looking at. These are the Atlantis Islands. We should call them Kuban, Kubana Khan, Kuban Khan, Guanasa, Guanabo, Haiti, Bahama Islands, Yucatan, Borican. We're talking, you know what I'm saying, all of the uh, so-called Caribbean today and all of that. That's all the Atlantis islands. That's not the mainland of Atlantis. Those are the islands of Atlantis. Because of course, in their perspective, perspective, it's all Atlantis. It's all Morocco. And the seed of Judah has nothing. Who would leave you with nothing? Who would do this to you, copper color race found here by the European, but the European ain't no white man. Copper color race found here by the European, the European ain't no white man. This is King Charles V. You've seen King James. Holy Roman Emperor Charles V, 1500 to 1558. Holy Roman Emperor Charles V. We're talking European, baby. We're just talking Europeans and stuff. Not modern titles, but real ones, ancient ones, true ones. This panel of ink and... These are the Incan chiefs that were cut off, that were cut off, let's go over here, that were cut off, right here, this is Charles, Charles V, Charles Quinto, with his crown and his cross, cutting off the entire copper color lineage of Negroes found here. Yes, you were cut off by melanin, let's go. A panel from the painting in Larco Museum in Lima, Peru. All right, so you've seen this before, and what does it say? The panel shows the last seven Inca emperors and the subsequent first European emperor of the Inca. I give you Charles. He's the first European emperor. 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 Charles V. Emperor of the Inca, that is. The first European emperor of the Inca on this native promised soil. 
the first European emperor on this soil. Cutting off the Inca. Okay. We're just talking perspective. Perspective. You know, we're just all trying to wake up together, man. I'm surfing away with you. It's not about bashing anything. It's about, you know what I'm saying? We got a responsibility to our tribe. We don't know shit. Ain't nobody putting us on shit. And they trying to recruit us into ideologies and not into our tribe. You know what I'm saying? You join up, you know, in a Moorish situation. You're Moorish. What's a Moorish? Well, if you're not full Moor, you might not be full Moab. Or you might not be full Canaanite. You might be Israelite. All these are so-called titles, right? So-called names, but we're talking about tribes. We're talking about a tribe of war. You know, so who really runs the temple? It can't be nothing but the Moabite. It can't be nothing but the true bloodline and everybody else that's recruited into it. Well, they're just a part of the ideology of the science temple, of the sciences. They, they just want to get degrees. Get their degrees and stuff. Degrees of understanding. We're just talking perspective. So you got Kush over here, Ham over here, huh? Kush over here, land of Canaan. If this is the land of Canaan, oh, but this must be the land of Canaan too. Why not? It's Ham's land. Give it to Canaan. Atlantis Island. Perspective. How far do you want to go with your perspective? I mean, you want to just kick it here? You want to just stay right there? Because the Most High can really boogie ball when it deals with perspective. How much do you want to conquer? How much of our land do you want for Ham and Cush? Are you gonna Are you gonna slice all this off for Ham and Cush? How far are you gonna go? I mean, we're just talking about, you know, basic perspective. Ham, Kush. So, I want you to get perspective when we're dealing with this. Because, you know, unless you're of these tribes, this shit ain't got nothing to do with you. This is their conquering. This is their, this is their holy Roman empire. And their perspective, look in his eyes. He has a unique perspective for his tribe. Look, man, this shit goes deep, man. And again, love to the fam. Love to the fam, man. Uh, Dante Fleming, man, who dropped this on us, man. Off his Facebook. This is from the book 13 Colonies by author uh, Helen Ansley Smith. Ainsley Smith, in the year 1664, there were 7,000 Dutchmen besides the real Dutchmen. <laughs> All right, so there's real ones and fake ones. Prus Prussians, Bohemians, French, Sweden, Swedes, or Swedes, uh, Norwegians, Danes, and 5,000 English, including Scots, Welsh, and Irish. Can I prove that these people were black? Yes, I can. See Benjamin Franklin's essay, America as a Land of Opportunity, 1751. So he's going to prove to you that the Dutch, the real Dutch, the Prussians, or Russians, <laughs> Bohemians, French, Swedes, Norwegians, Danes, 5,000, and the uh, English, including the Scots, Welsh, and Irish, are all melanated. Based on Benjamin Franklin's own words, man. Why should the Palatine Moors be suffered to swarm into our settlements? So he's worried about these Moors settling into their settlements, man. I mean, I would be too if this was your perspective. You know, if you're coming with your perspective and this is your idea of the world. But what's Benjamin Franklin talking about? They will never adopt our customs. Any more than they can obtain our complexion. <laughs> so they'll never be white. Huh? All of Africa. All of Asia. 
All of America are swarthy black. Russia, Italy, Spain, France, Swedes, and the Germans are black. So of all of let's just do a process of elimination. You see what we're dealing with when it comes to perspective and why treaties were made. And when you look at what's dominating today, you're like, whoa, what is this? What part of the game is this? Because it seems that in recent times everything was melanated. You know, now we got this thing stuck in our head because of all these images, our TV, or these movies, these images, iconoclasm. We are brainwashed. You could say you don't care, but I damn sure care about reality. Fuck that. Why would I want to live like damn, like Alice in Wonderland? Why would I want to live in an illusion when the shit ain't for real? If this is real, then something happened recently that is uh, an anomaly to say the least and we all gotta you know at least see the reality of the anomaly because all of Africa Asia and America are all so called black Italy Spain France Sweden Germans are all so called black and the only whites are made up from Benjamin Franklin's perspective of the Saxons and the English. But the Scots, the Welsh and Irish are not Saxon or English, he says. Which means they're so-called black. Welsh, Irish, Scottish. And we've been digging on the, digging on the Scots and the Picts. And we will have that Pick series coming up. Love to the family uh, Jay out in the UK. When Benjamin Franklin writes this essay in 1751, listen up. When Benjamin Franklin writes this essay in 1751, the black German king George II is sitting on the throne of England. You have to configure this into your malware, my Negro people, because you are the ones that are going to witness consciously a divine separation. In 1751, there was a black king, George, sitting on the throne of England. So when you get all this stuff in your history books about slavery, and, and if you give them the benefit of the doubt and say that you were enslaved or you were actual prisoners of war in the tribal wars. You were fighting here for your Kalelus, your promised land, because you're from here. Anybody that has a perspective like this must not be from here. Because this does not represent what this land is. See, this is the creator's land, not a celestial hijack. It doesn't belong to the Pharaoh with permission of the Pharaoh. This belongs to Hawa. And what is Hawa's perspective? <laughs> I tell you, it's all about perspective. This earth was made for the seed. And you have your lots. You were given lots. But the children of Lot were not happy with their lots. And even Horace Butler said they had a lot in South America. Which makes sense because they're Shemites. They're Moab. They're Shemites. Of course you had a lot in South America. Possibly Brazil. Possibly around that area. But when your perspective. Is the whole pie. Then your little lot in Brazil doesn't make much sense. Now you have a bigger perspective. You want to conquer. You want to be parasitic about this shit. And how parasitic do you want to be? Do you want to reign supreme on all the lands on the infinite plane? Perspective. Let's check this out, man. I'm dropping all these drops, man. Uh, you know. Click, click the links below. I always drop all these links, man. Click on the featured links. There's an untold 
and a sort of hush hush story about the Moors that is like a big secret a big secret truth is the Moors were and are the aboriginals and indigenous inhabitants of the north south central south of Mexico again more the, the word more is a misnomer because you're not talking tribal when you talk more to me you're talking adjective more ish more adjective more what you want more what you're greater than what what are you saying who's your daddy who's your daddy what tribe are you from so we're clear on our perspective and if your tribe only sees ham and kush on the game board then you know clearly we have opposing perspectives now you see north and south america today right but here it's called africa perspective what's your perspective negro you thought you was in america nah they have a perspective that you're in africa So the whole thing is Africa. The whole thing is not just Africa. It's a maxim. Remember that? It's a maxim. That's everything. And we are where we are, man. We're just surfing the wave. Again, it's not just to, you know, put whatever down and, you know, attack nobody, man. But look, man, we have a responsibility, man. And we see bullshit. We got to call bullshit when we're the ones that have lost our inheritance because they're literally making inheritance treaties right on top of our face bone. Transfer of inheritance to the Moors of North Amexa. Amexa? Yeah, man. Amexa. We're talking Africa. We're talking Africa. You didn't make this ideology up. Someone's putting it on you and been putting it on you. They said, nah, man. <laughs> You're not in Kalelus or how we cool, nigga. That's you in Africa. You in Northwest Africa. Oh, this is West Africa? So when they say we're from West Africa, when they keep telling us these lies, oh, you from Africa. You from Africa. Nigga, you from Africa. <laughs> They're literally saying we're from Africa. We just don't have the perspective of what Africa is to them. This is Africa. America is Africa. Whoa. Is that because Africa is America? Because Egypt is here? Perspective. Because Egypt is here. Again, from the book Oriental Masonry, man, or anx the ancient mystic Oriental Masonry. Let's get it bigger. The cradle of symbolism used in all masonry is placed by many, by many of the best authorities in that country which they believe was first inhabited, i.e. the plateau of Tartary. And from there transmitted to this generation by the sages of India, Persia, Ethiopia, and Egypt. We are not indebted to either ancient Egypt for either religion or masonry, but to America. 
It is a fact that at Memphis, Egypt, in the pyramids, under the guidance of the kings, the mystic rites of masonry were worked many thousands of years ago. But at that time, Egypt and the continent of America were one and the same. This is the masonry, ancient mystic oriental masonry. Letting you know that you're in Egypt now. Because many thousands of years ago, but at that time, Egypt and the continent of America were one and the same. That's why they say we are not indebted to either ancient Egypt for either religion or masonry. They're not talking about the Egypt over there. They're not indebted to that so-called Egypt there, but to America. Why? Because America and Egypt are the same. In America, rediscovered in the 15th centuries and repopulated in the 17th, was recovered Egypt. In America, rediscovered in the 15th century, by who? And repopulated in the 17th, by who? Was recovered Egypt and the Promised Land, man. So... <laughs> We're talking about the promised land. They're just claiming a promised land for themselves. Jerusalem, Jerusalem, Jerusalem. They're claiming it for Egypt and the land of the constellation of the eagle. You think this is play play? Egypt and the promised land recovered. They're recovering something. Columbus said he's recovering the holy city. Who was financing it? What was really going on? Are we talking a more recovery as everything popped off with the civil wars and these wars after that, 1494 and, and on and on and on and on up to 1774? We're talking about the same. Who was, who was still up? 1751, the black German king, George. So George the second is on the throne in England in 1751 let that settle in black ass King George is the king of England in 1751 when they're rolling up on you with the papal bull in 1492 and 1494 it's on the cracking and all those hundreds of years they still got a black king so you know they was rolling on you. This is tribal war. And they use the so-called white man. As a mercenary. Mercenary. And then he turned on them. Or they went, you know, behind the scenes. And they still are rocking this shit. Maybe they still, you know, maybe <laughs> this so-called Illuminati thing is nothing but just a bunch of niggas kicking back. You know what I'm saying? From tribes that aren't your tribes. Shit. Is that so crazy? They had a black king in England up until 1751. Maybe they just went undercover. Did they really get overthrown? Did the Nazis really lose? What did Max Byers say? Everything's flipped, man. Your history's flipped. You think we won this war? We lost this war. You think you think we got over they got overthrown? They didn't. You think we are them? We're not them. They know this stuff. They know they're flipping you upside down. They know perspective, 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 perspective. They're flipping you upside down with bullshit. Claiming it all. This land, that land, all that plays. This is a new world. They're from here. You're from all of this. And this is all that remains. And we're talking perspective when we deal with vortexes and dragon lines and energy grids and someone hijacking your frequency. Claiming Atlas, claiming fallen angel Poseidons. Black King George, 1751, let's go. Africa is America. To them, why?
because Egypt and the continent of America are one and the same according to these high level degree masons of magic Egyptian science. We're talking about with permission from the Pharaoh. We're talking about Moab, man. We're talking about Egypt and Egypt knows this is America. Oh, we're going to get into Esteban Nico, because just like the uh, Chronicle Akakor, there's this character, Stephen or Esteban the Moor. And you look him up, you know, and do a little recon and just lays it out. Was one of the first native Africans to reach present day United States. So if the first native African reached you, Negro here in 1500 or 1539, he is known by many different names, but is commonly known as Esteban de Dorantes, Estebanico, or Esteban the Moor, or Mustafa Zimori. He's from Azimor, Morocco. He got killed in the promised land because he brought them weapons of death, and he said he was representing white people. Why did he say white people and not the Moors? Why did they keep saying he was enslaved when he was really running this shit? He said he was representing white people so he didn't give up the cover of what tribe he was representing. And they killed him. He tried to be slick, right? They used him as bait. And how we cool. How we cool. And when we talk how we cool, we talk Cibola, we talk promised land. That's the promised land. We're talking Four Corners. We're talking Meshi, Meshika. We're talking Esteban Nico. And all this time, while they're invading, now this is the first Moor to enter the Four Corners. We're talking New Mexico. He was one of the first Native Africans. Some say he was the very first to enter, the first non-Native to even enter the Four Corners. Hawiku, Kalelus, the promised land. Shimbola, Simbala, Sibola. And he brought them weapons of death. He brought them some hijack. So he's the first one to reach them in 1539. Now they're trying to claim your land. Now they want everything for him. The first native African reaches here in 1539. Now, we know we had our trade thing. We, You know what I'm saying? We was doing what we was doing. I'm just saying what they say. And what's the real? Because either way you served this thing, he was being used to invade. And after this, the war popped off. Now, we're going to get into the Prince Uriel Bay. He's going to get more back into that. We got some of that before, man. Love to Isaac Ford for dropping that on us. We'll get some more of that, man. We just surfing the wave, though, man. We're about perspective. Atlantis Islands, okay, Morocco, okay, okay. The Moors are those descendants of the Africans who inhabited the northwest and southwest shores of Africa, the present Moroccan Empire, not Kingdom, which is in the east. Al Morocco was established on the shores of America. <laughs> well, if Egypt is here, of course they're claiming this first, people. This is the old world. Let's go. We're just talking perspective. When everything is connected. This right here is Kush. This is Havala. Almost sounds like what they call Cuba today. But this is, you know, basically South America. It looks like North America up here. You know, it looks like you got... It. Asia, which is really the calling Assyria. Assyria, Asia, maybe. Land of Nod over here. Okay. Now notice over North America it says E D E N. That is Eden. Notice how this is the anti diluvian diluvian world. So before the flood, the fall, the flood. So before the flood. A big old Eden is here, not America, not Ham, not Cush, 
Actually, you see Kush over there. You don't see him, right? Yeah, so we see Kush. So Kush is in his right place. <laughs> but then they put uh, Eden over here. Not Ham. Eden. All right. And then very, I uh, know it's small, it says River Euphrates. And here it says Zion. So Zion is right where Peru would be. This is South America, North America. So right where Peru would be is Zion. And River Euphrates is right over there. Right in America. When have we seen this before? Remember this document, man? Pull this up. You got the link. We're talking about the 1700s. Get it bigger to go. All right. So they were advertising these these beasts, these these animals that are in America. This is how they're trying to get these so-called Europeans over here. This is a painting from 1700. From Jean Velten from the University of Amsterdam talking about the tapirs and the wonders of nature here. All right. Let's get this Euphrates. Oh, there we go. So it says he painfully, he paints a colorful Gauche, Gauche of several tapirs grazing peacefully in the waters of what is undoubtedly meant to be the river or the Euphrates River in America. The river and its banks are suggested with vague washes of blue and green. So we're talking about this painting here if it was in color. These are the tapirs grazing that we're talking about in America. Rather, he paints a colorful gush, gushe of several tapirs grazing peacefully in the waters of what is undoubtedly meant to be the e Euphrates River in America. Undoubtedly meant to be the Euphrates River in America. And this is in the 1700s. And now we're getting the confirmation that in the antediluvian world, you have the River Euphrates right here in America. Right above Zion, where Peru or Haru or Jerusalem would be. We're just keeping it, you know what I'm saying? We're just, we're just keeping it wavy. So we got the substantiating evidence of Syria here. That's very interesting, man. All right. Euphrates River in America. You got the link. Pull it up. And this is a great link, man. Dropped to us. Dropped off to us, man, by uh, the bro, the bro. Uh, Chris Duncan, man, wonderful job. I'm just going to get a little bit of start of this because I definitely want to get into this Prince Uriel Bay. Actually, what I'm going to do is probably get a piece of the Prince Uriel Bay and then I'll probably do a dismount with it, man. So, love to Chris Duncan. I'm going to move this over here so we can get that. All right, here we go. Let's dig on it, man, from about the 18-minute mark, man. You got the link, pull it up. And, uh, yeah, I mean, he gets into the grid, access, conscious, grid, change, all that. Peace and power, man, to the fan. We're just getting the babies out, man, and uh, let's see what he's dropping, man. We got some of this before. Again, love to Isaac Ford for this drop. Let go. Hey. Hold on, I got my war. I still got some war drones. You're probably in Ireland or something. Uh, oh, we're going to get back to the syntax, too, man. We're going to get back to that syntax. Let me back it up a little bit for your viewing pleasure. Bam! Let's go, man. Let's fall back. We're going to get back to that document. Keep it funky, man. Let's go. in and throughout the United States. So now when we look at the 
uh, beginnings of the Moorish um, corporate family trust known as the United States or more commonly known as the United States, it's important to understand that it was not originally known as the United States uh, in 1774. That is what has become a common appellative. Um, but if you do any research and you look at the uh, the Anales Continens, the Anales Continens is the continental records, which prior to that was known as um, the Anales Imperium, which was the imperial records. And now in the imperial, in imperial records, you have what is known as the Consociuimos Regnum. The Consociuimos Regnum was a consolidation or a convocation of 13 royal families. Those royal families were Moorish families uh, that basically consolidated their power for a number of reasons of which I 13 royal Moorish families. So what tribe is that? You see, so they go vague. You have a perspective where you, in your, at least in your mind, you can ask that pertinent question. What is this confederacy? What do you mean? You know, you know, get it like it's the first time. What is this confederacy? Just so we have a perspective of what the bro just dropped down when he said 13 royal colonies. I'll get into why we was rocking together. For lo, thine enemies make a tumult and they that hate thee have lifted up the head. This is Psalms 83. This is against the seed of the creator. This is against the image of the creator. That are called by the name Israel. For lo. Thine enemies make a tumult. Against the copper color negro that doesn't know who he is. Nothing about this history hasn't been put and taught. And, and, and you know what I'm saying. His boots ain't been laced by nobody on this because he doesn't belong to these tribes. He belongs to the tribe of Judah, Asher, Gad, Reuben. He belongs to, you know, your octoctone on indigenous, you know what I'm saying, real, real rock steady. He don't belong to this Atlantis hijack. He ain't got nothing to do with an Atlantis hijack. For lo, thine enemies make a tumult, and they that hate thee have lifted up the head. They have taken crafty counsel against thy people and consulted against your hidden ones. You were hidden here. They just found you, right? As the Venico just rolled up on you in, in the 1500s. They just found you in the new world, right? They have taken crafty counsel against your people and consulted against your hidden ones. They have said, and come, they have said, come, let us cut them off from being a nation. What nation doesn't know who the fuck they are? Doesn't have no land, but seems to be the most popular people on earth. Come, let us cut them off from being a nation. That the name of Israel may be remembered no more in remembrance. Remember no more. Today you just say I'm a Christian. I'm a Muslim. I'm a this. I do this. But you lost your name. Hawa. Hawa Israel. For they have consulted together with one consent. Verse 5. For they have consulted together with one consent. They are confederate against you. The tabernacles of Eden. Ishmael lights, Moab, more, Moab, more, and the Hagarines, Gabal, and Ammon, Amalek, the Philistines with the inhabitants of Tyre, Asor, also is joined with them. They have hope, hoping the children of Lot, man, so you got the children of Lot. 
do unto them as unto the Midianites, as to Sisera, Jabin, and the brook of Kassan. I mean, they don't want that. So they have said, come, let, them, let us cut these Negroes off from being a nation. Let's take their land, their gold. Let's put, do some coordinates, longitude, latitude on them, so that the name of Israel, the name that they are, they are no longer the American. Somebody else is the American. Even in their dictionary, it says the copper color race is found here. Their titles are gone. You are no longer the con. They have your con. They have your con, man. Con, man. <laughs> con, man. For they have consulted together with one consent. The bro just said, well, why do these 13 royal colonies rock together with one consent? For they have consulted together with one consent to cut you off from being a nation. They are a confederacy against you, Negro. Sons of Jacob, Hawako. And they list them and calls them out by name. Edom, Ishmael, Moab. Let's go, man. What does he mean? See, you can't just slide that right by us without us having a full understanding of the confederacy he just mentioned and dropped on your Facebook. That is what has become a common appellative. Um, but if you do any research and you look at the, uh, the Anales Continens, the Anales Continens is the continental records which prior to that was known as um, the Annales Imperium, which was the imperial records. And now in the imperial, in imperial records, you have what is known as the Consociuimos Regnum. The Consociuimos Regnum was a consolidation or a convocation of 13 royal families. Those royal families were Moorish families uh, that basically consolidated their power for a number of reasons which I'll go into. Consolidated their powers for a number of reasons. Go into. Uh, which you'll go into another time. All right. They consolidated their power for a number of reasons. They consolidated their power for a number of reasons. You gotta, I mean, we gotta nail this home, man. If we don't get nothing else, let's get this right here. The consolidation or a convocation of 13 royal families. Those royal families were Moorish families uh, that basically consolidated their power for a number of reasons, of which I'll go into. Uh, in consolidated their powers for a number of reasons. They have taken crafty counsel against your people and consulted against your hidden ones. They have said, come and let us cut them off from being a nation, that the name of Israel may no more be in remembrance. For they have consulted together with one consent, consolidated our power into one, consulted together with one consent, consolidated our power into one. They are confederate against you. My people, my tribe, we know who we are. They can't tell us who we are. They can't tell us who we're not. Informing this uh, corporate family trust again, as I said, that we call the United States Corporation. Um, and they did this uh, under what was known as the Capitis Socaetas, known to you as the Articles of Association. And three years later, the Capitis uh, Civitatis, known as the Articles of Confederation. Um, however, as you can see from the names that I'm giving, or the terminology uh, that's being used, is that these documents were not uh, originally in English. Uh, many of them were in the ancient Moorish Latin uh, language. Um, again, as I said, if you uh, do any extensive research, uh, if you look in um, their particular sections in the Library of Congress, as well as the Department of State Library, of which only very few people have access to, um, that will give you more information on uh, the early years of the forming of the United States Corporation. Um, at any rate, um, as I said, it was essentially or loosely termed Consociumus Regnum 
which basically was an act. It was not uh, a name, per se, that was used for the United States. Because when you say, consociwimos reinum, uh, consociwimos basically means that um, we have united, meaning that we have done something, or a group of us have done something, meaning we nobles, or we membrana of this particular thing that we have formed. This particular thing, this beast, this system, we have done something. Now, what is happening to you, Negro, while they're doing all this fancy footwork? According to his story, you're being slaughtered. Your women are being, you know what I'm saying, absolutely mutilated. You know what I mean? Your priests are being killed while they're establishing their perspective, their perspective, their perspective. Ham, ham, kush, kush. That's it. Their perspective is not your perspective. You have a greater perspective. This is not Africa. This is not Egypt. I mean, I know Egypt is here, but this don't mean that this is Egypt. This predates Egypt. This land is sacred ground. They want it to be their promised land. It is not. It is your Eden, not their Eden. It is your Eden. It is your perspective. We're just talking about the river Euphrates, man. We're just talking about the river Euphrates in America. What is undoubtedly meant to be the Euphrates River in America. The Euphrates River in America. Man, come on. Uh, uh, or these United Kingdoms. And so, Consortivimos Reino um, was the consolidation or convocation of these 13 kingdoms. Uh, but what has happened with the whole United States aspect is that they've been using um, an indicative verbal action in the noun sense, or nonsense, if you will. Meaning that when they say the United States, obviously they're using a definite article, the, and so therefore using it in the noun sense but when you say anything even according to the rules of english and like i walked to the store obviously that indicates that you've done something as in a verbal action um and therefore cannot be used uh, as a name or again in the noun sense so, right, so when they say United States, United, the fact that it has an ED means it's an action, which means it's not a name. You can't use United States because United is implying an action of uniting. I walked. That's an action. That's not an actual person, place, or thing. All right. United cannot be in the name of a true, you know what I'm saying, in their, in, in, according to their rules. This is their language. You said Moorish Latin. They made up the Latin and the English and all that. All this forked tongue came out of their Atlantean hijack, their trickery, their thoughtism. Let's go. Well, these particular 13 kingdoms, uh, later misnamed colonies and states, had rulers known as Bais, Bais, or Begla Um And uh, these Bay titles were titles that were also used by uh, the first ruler of China, known as Qin Bai, and of course also used uh, in the Osman, the Moorish Osman Empire, uh, more commonly known as the Ottoman Empire, uh, the Bai or Bay title. But anyway, these Bays or Bay rulers on the continent in the 1760s and 70s were kings, princes, and governors owing allegiance to the Sultan at that time, uh, Sayyidi Ibn Abdullah Muhammad the 17th, uh, who ruled the Sultan. Is your allegiance to the Sultan, Negro? Their allegiance is to the Sultan. It's a different power. It's a different name. Who between 1757 and 1790 from Marrakesh. Now, Marrakesh at that time was uh, Philadelphus or Philadelphia, uh, which was both, uh, this was a part of Mauritania or Mauritania. And Mauritania was actually in North and South Dakota, uh, here in North America. Wow. So you're thinking it's over there. Everything's in Africa over there. But remember, this is 
Africa. This is Africa. We're talking perspective. So when he says Philadelphia is Mauritania, he's going to get into more how he's saying New York is Jerusalem and all that. Hey, hey man, there's a lot of salams, salams, salams. I mean, the eclipse is going to enter Oregon salam. There's many salams, it seems. It seems like all of this is the promised land. Don't let them hijack you. So when he says it's all, when he breaks down Philly, Mauritania, what he said about North and South Dakota, I mean, he's breaking down the old biblical land, biblical world, or, you know what I'm saying, ancient world, should I say, you know, get out the mind of the Biblios, but the ancient world, where it's all right here, because you're in Africa, baby. You're in Egypt, baby. In other words, you're on sacred ground. Now, this is a tribal war. If you're outside of this and you're just talking about, we just talking about a tribal war. If you just got here because you wanted a, a, a better life and shit, then I get it. But just know that you just walked into sacred ground and you better choose up and you better choose up a real fast. And uh, of course, Marrakesh, as I said, was Philadelphia. And Marrakesh, which later became known as Morocco, uh, means. Uh, sons of Kush. Philadelphia is Marrakesh or Morocco, according to their perspective. I mean, that's this is Africa. Remember, this is West Africa. You're West African, right? They always said you came from West Africa, right? You're in West Africa. So Philadelphia, this is not a game, man. He's telling you <laughs> what's really popping. Philadelphia is Morocco. Let go. And, uh, and so, um, this royal family, or convocation of royal families, rather, the 13 royal families, uh, some of the names, if you read in the uh, imperial records or the continental records, uh, as opposed to the congressional records, um, some of the names were Agenor, uh, Agathokies, um, Ayak, Barca, which, by the way, Barca is another name or an ancient name for Chicago. Um, and after Barca, it became known as Libya. Bang! Bang! Perspective, man. Perspective, man. Chicago is Libya. You want to hear it again? Barakesh, what do you say? Barakesh? Let go. Royal families, rather, the 13 royal families, uh, some of the names, if you read in the uh, imperial records or the continental records, uh, as opposed to the congressional records, um, some of the names were Agenor, uh, Agathokies, um, Ayak, Barca, which, by the way, Barca is another name or an ancient name for Chicago, um, and after Barca, it became known as Libya, or... Libya. Libya. I don't know what else you need. You know, I mean, you saw what the Masons had to say that Egypt and America are the same. You're seeing the river Euphrates in America. You see the river Euphrates on this map of the antediluvian world with Eden in North America. He's letting you know they're claiming Morocco right here. Why? Because of their perspective that they're in Africa or a maxim a maxim they also flipped you upside down we're just talking about ancient lands and perspective and how much perspective do they have atlanta atlantis atlantic it goes deeper it goes deeper man let's get a few more minutes uh, uh, and the people, the Moorish people, were known as Lachabim at that time. Uh, but anyway, as I said, one of the names, Ayak, the English equivalent, believe it or not, would be Ajax. So what they've done is the Albion has reduced many of these royal names and titles to toilet cleansers and other derogatory things. Mm. Um, which I find to be very interesting. Now, also the name Agathokies which, as I said, was one of the names of the royal families, is where we get the Aga title 
for governor, which is, of course, also used in the, uh, the Turkish language as well. Um, but anyway, as I said, many of these legal documents uh, were not in the lingua anglicae, or the English language, uh, until actually a century later. So, um, again, you're looking at uh, the time of the federal Christian European influence under bankruptcy reconstruction between 1861 and 1878, which was one of the reasons, apart from many reasons... Under bankruptcy reconstructions, and this is some dates, but we have that document that we're about to actually get into in about, you know, one more minute. I'm going to let him go one more minute on that. Where's that doc we got? All right, quick, man. This is some more on that Benjamin Franklin. I know this is real small, but I'm just going to leave it on you. Drop it on you. But I'm going to, you know, I'm going to read that last, you know, this kind of has a different uh, wording of it. But Benjamin Franklin was breaking down. And he said, which leads me to add one remark, that the number of pure white people in the world is proportionably very small. They want you to think they're dominant. They're everywhere. The num this is from Benjamin Franklin, man. You got the link. You pull it up. Which leads me to add one remark that the number of purely white people in the world is proportionally very small. All Africa is black or tawny. Asia, chiefly tawny. America, exclusive of the newcomers, except these new motherfuckers, is wholly so. So America is wholly black, wholly copper colored. Holy. That's why the definition of an American is the copper color tribes that are found here by the European. And now we know what the European actually look like. Cutting off. Cutting off the Inca. Right. Holy black. <laughs> so the America is wholly black. The Spaniards, Italians, French, Russians, and Swedes are generally of what we call a swarthy, which is a dark complexion, as are the Germans also, the Saxons only accepted, who with the English make the principal body of white people on the face of the earth. So he narrowed down the only pure so-called white people to the Saxons and the English, man. And he told you, you know. That the pure white people in the world are very small, proportionally extremely small. How do a, a, these extremely small people have to have their grips on the entire world? How did they hijack this perspective unless they didn't? Do you believe these people of very small proportion can truly hijack the perspective of these egomaniacs? That want to hijack the creator's turf for Atlantis? What? The celestial? What? Nothing represents above the barrier here until you start getting a greater perspective. So what are we doing? Oh, that's the badico. What are we doing? So we're saying the body of white folk. English and Saxons make up the only body of white people on the face of the earth. I could wish their numbers were increased. And while we are, as I might, as I may call it, scurrying our planet, scurrying our planet, that's what they're doing? By clearing America of woods, that's what they're calling us? And so making the side of our globe reflect a brighter light to the eyes of inhabitants in Mars or Venus? What does it mean? He's saying that he's going to clear out America of all these indigenous people to reflect a brighter light to the eyes of inhabitants in Mars or Venus. Well, it sounds like the same perspective as these motherfuckers. Because Mars, Moors are for Mars. Moors are for Mars. And Prince Uriel Bay told you that. Of the Civil War because it was to give them enough time to actually change or alter many of the salient records um, to, as I said, to translate them, to omit things by, again, omission or commission. And um, so it gave them enough time to pray and alter these records. 
and to ultimately give you the popularized versions that you read today in your miseducation uh, system. Hmm. And so the original, of course, is always in the lock and key, and you get the neutered version or, or neutered translation. But back to 1774, when the Corporate Family Trust was uh, organized um, or created, uh, one of the main reasons for the convocation or consolidation was due to the fact that the Moorish sway in the Americas was on the fast track of decline. So they were losing the war. So they consolidated and made a confederacy, a crafty council against you because you was whooping ass. And that's why you don't know who you are today. You weren't slaves. You were prisoners of war. Let go. Because of the 300 years continental wars between uh, the Franciscan Dutch and the Mossarabs. The Mossarabs is basically another term, a name for uh, Cretan or Christian Spaniards. <laughs> We're talking about a 300 year continental war going on in the 1400s. You know, it ain't got nothing to do with white people. So whoever he's called in Cretan must be referring to you. He just is admitting to there being a war for hundreds of years. And I just said Estevanico just rolled up on here from Morocco in 1540. He died in 1539, so right before, you know, right, right around that time. Now you add that 300-year war, and you're getting around that late 1700s, 1800s, right? 1776, Declaration of Independence. You got all that going on right around the same time. This is now lining up. Uh, now, during this time, during the 300 years continental wars, uh, you had many of the older generations of Moors who were dying off. Many were prisoners of war. Uh, the newer generations were being born in war camps um, and were now being nationally lobotomized via Cretan reclassification and socio-behavioral modification. Uh, and this is what Prophet Nubadra Ali is referring to in chapter 47, verses 16 and 17, when he tells us that through sin and disobedience, every nation has suffered slavery due to the fact that they honored not the Cretan principles of their, of their fathers or forefathers, uh, and this is why the nationality of the Moors was taken away from them in 1774, and the words Negro, Black, and Colored were given to the Asiatics of America, uh, who were of Moorish descent. Um, and uh, so anyway, but the, the loss of nationality, even though it's understood that the, Mo the nationality of the Moors was taken away in 1774, it's important to understand that the nationality meant the majority of Moors and not all of the Moors, including, for example, the royals uh, of the Continental, what later became the Continental Congress, and about a thousand Moorish factions. Um, but understanding the seriousness of the situation, these Moors uh, of the Royal Convocation, uh, was again the fundamental reason for, one, the formation of the Corporate Family Trust, the National Trust, um, in, again, what later became the United States, and two, the establishing of the federal political system for the Albion Mail, uh, as this was a part of the Moore's C-3 Communications Operation Command Stratagem, or military strategy, uh, that was used to, as strange as it may sound to some, um, it was to ensure the survival of future generations. Hmm. Uh, you should also know uh, that even though the Moors, uh, or the Moorish Navy rather, more specifically fell in West Palestine, uh, on the Sea of Galilee, and <laughs> now the Galilee is in the east coast of America. In uh, 1795, the royal families, nonetheless, were still running government from behind the scenes until Civil War era Reconstruction. Uh, so initially, the congressional membership consisted of the above 13 rulers and key family members that eventually comprised 35 members, and finally the 20 observers. Uh, only the, the Bay kings, princes, and governors were eligible to serve as Preissens, or president, commander-in-chief, uh, of which there were between the years of 1774 and 89, 16 to be exact. Uh, 16 presidents, and what were you doing? What was happening to you? What was happening to your mothers while they were presidents? playing possum 
playing house. Playing with your house. Let's go. Who not only did they, like presidents of the modern era, sign congressional laws, treaties, military orders, but in addition presided over judicial congressional cases. And in 1775, under the Henry Middleton and Peyton Randolph second term administration, was the beginning of the so-called or infamous uh, American Revolution. Now, what's very interesting about this is because of how we've been, again, miseducated and taught history, etc., we tend to look at it uh, compartmentally. In other words, we think of the American Revolution, okay, Christmas Attics, that whole thing, and uh, Boston, uh, and uh, Paul Revere, etc., and nothing else was going on. But as I mentioned earlier, you had a 300 years continental war that was going on in many... 300 year continental war that was going on already. This is pre white man. Let's go. Parts of the continent. Um, in parts of, uh, what is it, uh, Guayni Cuna, known as Panama, Maco Tucano Huitoto, known as Colombia, uh, Yonamam, Arawa Carib, Venezuela, uh, Utuapaque Fima, Mexico, Maya, Guatemala, uh, Arucanian, Chile. Uh, the Aguita, Bolivia, and Apibon, Paraguay. Uh, so and all that is Jerusalem. All that is Promised Land. All that is the fight between you and your other melanated brothers for what they're calling their Promised Land and what you know is yours. Because you wouldn't have to enter the mind of a hijack and claim everything for Ham and Kush if it was yours. You just wouldn't have to do it. So yeah, man, y'all get the rest of that, man. That's some great drought, man. Love to uh, Isaac, man. Isaac Ford for that. Let's get some of this. Uh, how much time we got, man? We all right? Let's get a few minutes. I'm just run down this. Uh, what we got? Let's get this right quick, man. Transfer of inheritance, because we got this before. Remember, this is all for your land. You know what North Amexum is now, right? Amexum. North America, Africa is North America. So let's break the code. What are we talking about here in this treaty? This is from, you know, I believe around the 1400s, it says at the end, 1430 MC. But let's see, man, because, you know, we're going to get this one and then we're going to get one very uh, recently from the uh, mayor of Chicago. So the Moorish National Republic. All right, so it's the transfer of inheritance to the Moors of North Maxim or Africa. North America, North Gate, the Moorish Divide and National Movement of the World. Trans transfer of inheritance, 2nd day of December, 1430, United States of America Corporation Trustee and Zelia S. L. Aboriginal Indigenous National Moorish American Harris. Moabite Bang So while they say more Or when they say more Ish <laughs> Kind of like Jewish Not quite You know that kind of covers a broad band But when they really get down to it Their main more is what they're calling a Moabite And if Moabites exist and so do Israelites. And that war has been going on for a long time. And they look just like you. And this is the big secret because you're in Egypt, in America. You're in Egypt. And they came and they rolled up on a tribal war. Between more and more. I mean, we're all Moors. We're all great. We're all more. You call us the Picts. You call us the Clan Ross and Roos. Man, we're all more, but we're not all Moabite. And that's when it gets real specific and real and real tribal, especially when they deal with land and resources at latitude, longitude 4177. And we're just talking Northwest of Maxim, and we know where that is, North America. And this is between Zelia S. Bay. I'll go to the bottom, man, because we got this before. I'll leave the link. You can get all of it. 
the foregoing instrument was acknowledged before me on this day. Uh, it is 18th of December 2010 by Zillia SL. So, you know, maybe this is some more recent stuff. This is 2010, who is personally known to me or who has produced Morris American National Card as identification. Interesting. We're just talking Zillia SL, the mower, by making latitude and longitude right on your turf. Because, hey, to them, it's all their turf. Oh, man, they want to cut you off from being a nation. Where's that doc we want, man? Where's that doc we want? Oh, yeah, all right. So this is the, uh, this is super small, man. I'm going to get a piece of this. This is from the mayor of Chicago, 2011. All right, so that was 2010. It's 2011. Whereas the Moorish Americans are the descendants of the ancient Moabites. Now, this is from the mayor of Chicago, my people, in 2011. Is it play, play? You got the doc. I know it's small. Just listen up and read it on your own. Pull it up. This is from the mayor of Chicago. Exclusively breaking down we breaking down. This is a tribal thing. And this is what's happening beneath your eyes while you're calling yourselves black and nigga this, nigga that. Crip this, blood this, vice this, folk this, this, all this tribal shit. And underneath your arms, they're doing real tribal moves. They're doing real money tribal moves for latitude and longitude, transferring your inheritance right beneath your nose. Whereas the Moorish Americans are the descendants of ancient Moabites. I want to say it says Hamalites, something like that, and Canaanites who are permitted by the old pharaohs of Kemet to traverse from East Africa. Alright, so that's East Africa. You're in West Africa, America. And something, and later formed themselves kingdoms extending from the northwestern and southwestern shores of Africa, the Atlantic Islands, onto the present day continental America. And whereas the indigenous Moorish peoples of America are now united in order to again link themselves with the family of nations so now they want to do a new treaty with the family of nations is this making uh your status any better so-called negro or are you still getting gunned down in the streets while they're making treaties with the nations for themselves the moabites hamites canaanites whereas the moorish americans being aboriginal to the territories in North, Central, and South America, hmm, have formed a sovereign theocratic government guided by the command principles or love of love, truth, peace, freedom. Yeah, all right, all right, all right. Man, whereas uh, January 8th, 1886, Noble Drew Ali was born in the state of North Carolina. Something destined to become the first patriarch of ISIS. Mentally enslaved. ISIS mentally enslaved Moorish American people. You want to say that's what it says. In the set 1912, he was later anointed as El Hari Sharif Abdal Ali by the heads of Egypt and holy city of Mecca of Islam. Right in your face. Now, therefore, I, Rahm Emanuel, mayor of the city of Chicago, do hereby proclaim January 8th, 15, 2012, to be Moorish American Week in Chicago. All this to get a fucking Moorish American Week. Is it worth it? To get a Moorish American Week while the true Negro, the true Moor gets slaughtered, the true great gets slaughtered. As long as you got your status, huh? As long as you got your place. As you come back. <laughs> in order to again link themselves with the family of nations. So go ahead and again reclaim your allegiance to the pharaohs of Egypt. Oh man, I'm trying to get this link, man. Before I go crazy. 
Where we at? Where we at? Where we at? There we go. All right, 1928 CE to 1933 CE, the U.S. bankruptcy and the Moors. Again, love to Chris Duncan. The purveyors of so-called white supremacy were just walking along, minding their own business, suppressing, destroying, and or representing the truth about history, Moors, history in particular, when out of nowhere came the savior for the fallen people, the savior for the fallen people, that they had extinguished the light and life within. His appellation is... Noble Drew Ali, you got the link, you pull it up. Having travelled the world, traveled the world, Noble Drew Ali obtained knowledge, wisdom, all right, so it breaks all that down. In 1928, the Pan-American Conference was held in Havana, Cuba. Secretary of State Hughes went down to represent the United States, and Noble Drew Ali went down to represent the Moors at the conference, the mandate for the landmass of Greater Amexum. America, North, Central, and South America, misnomered as North, Central, misnomered as North, Central, and South America, so was returned to the Moors, to Moab, got all of, all of the Americas. Now, who has the right to give the Americas to Moab, the so-called white man, the invader? I mean, they're all the invader. I mean, even... Estevanico is the invader. He's the first native African to reach the present day continent, the United States, bringing his weapons of war. Esteban the Moor. This is what the invader look like. And this is what the invader does. He cuts you off and he looks like you. And you think it's somebody else. And they're all playing along to the same damn game, doing the same damn thing. So North Central and South America was, was returned to the Moors. Noble Drelli knew that knew what this meant and that the ramifications what the ramifications was and is. Several stop gashing, stop gap measures were taken by Noble Drelli to secure the Moors' birthright, inheritance, and beneficiary and interest as Moors to the landmass within the aforementioned land mandate. And from one perspective, this might look like you know something very noble. But it doesn't include your tribe. So this is them gaining, you know, some some vision of inheritance from the celestial that has nothing to do with Hawa above the barrier. Has nothing to do with the tribes of Shem whatsoever. So it's their prophet. Israel never had a prophet outside of Israel. Ezekiel, Jeremiah, Hezekiah, Edris. You know what I'm saying? You know, all in all, never had a prophet outside of Israel. And now we wake up and you go after any anybody outside your tribe that's not even mentioning your tribe, not your birthright. The more is the birthright. Your birthright is connected to your tribe. Every tribe used to have their own tree. You don't think, you know what I'm saying? It matters what tribe. You, you can't be from another tribe eating off another tribe's tree that's not order is it so noble draw Lee went through you know what i'm saying you can read this man this is a great drop uh nevertheless the so-called european on both sides of the atlantic knew that their system was and is existing and functioning on borrowed time they also realized that the length of that borrowed time is directly tied to the length of our the moors ignorance lack of knowledge or our self of ourself, our history, our culture, and what is rightfully just ours. This fact is what has compelled the so-called white supremacists to do all that's possible to keep the undeclared mentally comatose Moors from ever waking up and reclaiming all that rightly belongs to our people. Well, damn, I mean, there's two perspectives. Because you already had a civil war more on more for 300 years. So when you wake people up and you say, oh, we're Moors, let's go. You're not telling them the whole truth, and that's not fair. You're not, you don't want to spark that war back up, because that has to do with tribal inheritance and birthright. And you just want our help to go fight some shit that you started. Some people you brought over here. Noble Drew Ali's work as a result of what transpired at the Pan-African Conference touched off a flurry of activity on both sides of the Atlantic, 
because the so-called European from both sides of the Atlantic knew what was coming as a result. The actions of Noble Drew Ali caused the so-called Europeans, the so-called Europeans, because this is what a European looks like, Charles V. The first European emperor of the Inca, Charles V. You remember Sir Charles? You remember Sir Charles? Charles V. Charles V. The so-called Europeans from finding out what's really going on. Noble Drew Ali's work as a result of what transpired in Pan, Pan America Conference touched off a flurry of activity. All right, so it caused the so-called Europeans to assemble themselves to conspire and plot a way to deal with what they thought would be the reemergence of the Moors. <laughs> well, black ass King George was still on the throne in 1751. So something's got to get. The reemergence of the Moors to whom their respective countries and are tributary to as they always have been the U.S. and Barbary powers by David Metrici, written in 1800s, man. So y'all yeah, dig on this, man. This is uh, some great drive by uh, Prince Duncan. And he's breaking down exactly what the uh, Prince uh, Yuri. Prince Uriel Bay was breaking down, man. The bankruptcy, the U.S. bankruptcy, and the Moors. This is the timeline on this one, 18 or 1928 to 1933. I wonder if we got a little time to kind of dig on, you know, some of this, man. Maybe get a couple minutes of it. Let's go. Peace and power to, uh, uh what is that, Moroccan 720? Get it right, man, because you know, we're just getting the drop out, man. I appreciate everybody's drop. Morris America 720, man. Peace and power, my brother. Go. We just heard from the way. Don't mind us. From the House of Representatives, the 59th Congress, second session. Citizenship of the United States, expatriation, and protection abroad. Letter from the Secretary of State. Submitting report on the subject of citizenship expatriation, and the protection abroad. Page 459, section Morocco. Morocco. Sir, there are strictly speaking no Moroccan laws relating to the citizenship of Moorish subjects in Morocco. The fundamental laws of this non-Christian country are based entirely upon the Islamic code, no part of which treats of the subject of citizenship. Page 460. Remember, this is Morocco. America is Morocco. So they're talking about the citizenship of America. Let's go. There are, however, numerous treaties and conventions between the various Christian countries and the Moorish Empire by means of which citizenship in this country is defined. But as I understand, from the above acknowledged instructions that it is not the desire of the department to call for a report upon such lines, I will therefore confine these remarks to general conditions existing which may possibly be of some use in connection with the information desired. Section 1. Citizenship in Morocco may be said to be governed by the laws pertaining to the same in other countries with the exception that all persons residing in Morocco who cannot prove foreign citizenship or protection are considered ipso juer as Moorish subjects. Bang. That sounds like captivity. So if you cannot prove foreign citizenship in Morocco, remember you're in Morocco, you're in Northwest Amexum, then you are subjects to the empire, which is subject to the sultan, which only moves with permissions of the pharaoh of Egypt, which makes them the at the Egypt Atlanteans hijacking you the same way they were before the splitting apart of Atlantis. What's the difference in the power shift? You still see the pyramid with the all-seeing eye. That is the Moorish seal. 
with the Moorish codes and the Moorish laws and the Moorish corporation and the Moorish languages, Latin and English. Do you need any more uh, fingerprints on your amnesia? Now everyone has their fighting. They're fighting, they're fighting. Everyone's fighting their fight. Cool. As long as we comprehend that it's tribal. So when you wake us up, don't wake us up calling us black. Don't just call us more without telling us uh, what tribe you're representing so that we can be clear. So that we can go in our families and be like, look, man, are you, is grandma, you know, y'all know anything about this? How do we connect, man? Because the only thing we can do right now, honestly, man, is come back together and just know, you know what I'm saying, as indigenous, you know what I mean, that, you know, it's, it's much bigger than all this, man, but... We have to know the facts. You can't just wake us up and not give us the facts. I mean, we can't heal unless we got the drop. And if you want to work and rock with our tribe, stop putting us to sleep with these adjectives. That's called the black hole. No more black hole. Because if you could not prove foreign citizenship or protection from something else, you were a subject here. Now, why would there be a war for 300 years prior to the white man coming? And who was Estebani Kodamor or Mustafa Zimori? Two and three. Moorish subjects lost their nationality only by becoming naturalized in or protected by another country having treaty relations with the Moorish Empire. It was established by the Convention of Madrid, concluded July 3rd, 1880, as follows. Article 15. Any subject of Morocco who has been naturalized in a foreign country and who shall return to Morocco shall, after having remained for a length of time equal to that which shall have been regularly necessary for him to obtain such naturalization, choose between entire submission to the laws of the empire and the obligation to quit Morocco, unless it shall be proved that his naturalization in a foreign country was obtained with the consent of the government of Morocco. Foreign naturalization heretofore acquired by subjects of Morocco according to the rules established by the laws of each country shall be continued to head them as regards all its effects without any restriction. The above ruling has never yet been acted upon, and should this at any time be contemplated seriously, a large number of naturalized people, American and others, residing in Morocco would be affected thereby. 